In this second video on WebShirt Pro version 5, you'll learn how to use the new Lightroom and Capture One integration. In the previous video in this series, we already covered the new Save Load Settings Editor, which allows you to create any number of custom templates for exporting your images. And while none of this is required to use these integrations with the Lightroom or Capture One, they are very helpful, and so I recommend using the link below to go back and watch that video first if you haven't already seen it. Then, once you've optionally created any export templates you may want to use, you're all set, and there's no other setup required within the panel. So let's jump over to Lightroom. And in Lightroom, there's no special software you need to install either. We just need to export our images. So let's go click on my Cityscape folder, and I'm going to Command click on the Landscape folder to work from these two folders. And let's work with this image, the Aurora, and the Snaking River, and click Export. We'll see that I've got an export template I've already created. And I'll explain it in greater depth in a moment. But for now, just know that we're creating a temporary TIFF with a special name and opening it in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and click Export and see how it works. So my images have been sent to this folder open up in Photoshop, and the panel has seen that special name. This dash WSP batch and delete tells it that these are images that should be batch processed, and so now it's asking how we want to process them. If you haven't created any templates, you won't see these listed here, and you would only see the use current settings, which is, of course, perfectly valid. But I have some templates I'd like to use, so instead, let's go choose the Facebook with blur border, the 2 by one panel with a watermark, and my blackboard with white line for Facebook as well. And when I process these, it's going to take these three temporary files we've opened and create three versions of each. And we get nine images out of this process. And it just automatically goes through them and will export them to the same folder from which they came. So no matter what setting I have within the panel for the export location, these images always go back to the same location as the parent image or a subfolder if you use that. And the reason for that is we can control the location from Lightroom or Capture One and that's very convenient, as you'll see in a moment. So once it's done, it's asking about cleaning up these files. They're all throwaway files, so yes, let's delete them. You see they get cleaned up, and we're left with three versions of each image. We've got our two by one, our blur border, and our black border for each of the three images. Let's jump back into Lightroom and take a closer look at how this export template works. So we'll click on Export, and as I said, the key to it is this name. So the thing we really need to do is make sure we have rename on and then go down and edit and just append this suffix that's literally dash WSP for WebShirt Pro, batch and delete, where each of these words has a capital letter. It needs to be spelled exactly like this with exact capitalization in order to work. So if you don't use this ending, then the panel's gonna ignore the files and they'll just open in Photoshop and nothing will happen. Once you've added this, the other thing we need to do is choose the right file type. And I recommend using a TIFF with no compression and 16 bits in whatever color space makes sense to you. TIFF at 16 bits means we're sending a high quality source and using no compression is simply faster because when we're done, we're gonna delete this file. So compressing these files won't save disk space, it just slows us down. And then of course we have to have this image opened up in Photoshop in order for this to work. If we just create these files and leave them on the disk but don't open them in Photoshop, then WebShirt Pro will never see them and of course it won't do anything. But if you just manually open them, they will work at that point. That's all that WebShirt Pro cares about is that an image got open in Photoshop and it had this extension. And if 20 images get opened at the same time, it'll process all 20 in one batch. So very, very easy. And the thing about it is that everything I'm doing here can be done in Capture One basically the same way. There's nothing Lightroom specific here other than it needs to create a copy of the image. So we're not gonna work from the original and it needs to have a special name and then it needs to be opened up in Photoshop. And unfortunately, I don't believe that's something you can do in Adobe Bridge at this time, but if there is a way, please let me know and I'll add some more information. Otherwise, if they add more support in the future, we may be able to do this, but you do need to be able to create a copy with a special name and open it in Photoshop. The other piece of this is the export location. So normally in WebShirt Pro, you use the panel settings to determine where the output goes in terms of either being in a specific folder or going with the parent. But because we're able to control it from the originating application, and because we can work across multiple different folders, it's better to do it here. So WebShirt Pro will always put the image back with its parent unless you chose the option to create a subfolder in the parent's directory, but it's not going to use the main output folder location. It's going to go back where you want it. So if you want everything in a specific folder, then you should use that option for a specific folder and choose what folder you want. Or if you want these outputs to go alongside the original images, Instead, choose same folder as original photo, meaning in this case that the Cityscape image is going to get a version put in the Cityscape folder, and these other two images are in another folder, and so those outputs will go there, but everything will live alongside the original with this configuration. And we can try this out in a moment. Let's just clean this up 
for clarity to show that we're not using this location anymore. Let's go ahead and export. And so we're going to create those three versions. They get open in Photoshop. We don't see them here because they're actually in the same place as the source files. And just to speed things up, let's just make one export from this for the black border. So we'll go ahead and process this. When it's done, we'll have the option to delete these dummy TIFF files, which we'll do. So say yes, delete these dummy files. And we don't see any output here because it's back in those other folders. Let's go back to Lightroom. And within Lightroom, we don't immediately see it here because there's no option to automatically synchronize these folders. So what we need to do instead is run the sync. And you can run it at the folder level, but in this case, they're across multiple. So let's right click at the parent of these and synchronize the parent. And now you see it's finding there's three new images. Go ahead and synchronize. And voila, we have our three new images imported directly into Lightroom. And we'll see that in the Cityscape folder, we've got the one new version with our black border. And in the landscape, we've got the two new ones here with that border there as well. Now click to view the third and final video in this series where we'll look at how you can save custom crops with the original image.